Hello. Hooray. Ah, oh, it's the final night. I'm being so fancy. I've worn my best ball gown, but I've still got my slippers on. Ow, I can't get my leg that high. And I really honestly, I think this might be how ball gowns should go from now on. Like in a post-corona universe, we'll just, we'll just sack off high heels. It would really work for me. So I've gone so fancy. Look how big this bloody hair is, eh? That's, that's some high hair there. Um, how's everybody doing? Is everybody all right with their Wednesday? We're getting the we're getting the hang of this now, aren't we? Um, what's everyone saying? Excited for the So Fancy Wednesday Spectacular. Hello everyone. Loved the ending last night. That's good. Um, good. It felt a little sad, but get oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it's it's bittersweet, isn't it? Um, that's why reading back, I was like, oh, this needs an epilogue. Good morning, uh, New Zealand. Yay! Wet and horrible in Wellington. So not happy having to commute this morning. Oh, I've forgotten what a commute even is. I pay to sit in my car about now. I, I love driving. I really love driving. Um, I'm an environmentalist that loves to drive. Um, so I sort of find it there. Yeah, that's a bit better, isn't it? It's a bit less grainy. Um, I'm really missing the driving. Um, art world, I love the earrings. Thank you. I actually made these. Um, they, I really quite like making jewellery because I'm not very good at sitting still. So I end up doing little projects and I made them. Um, Right, I feel like this is about how many are normally here, isn't it? We'll do the epilogue, so this is quite exciting, because I've only just written this this week. So, I, yeah, I felt like it needed it, though. I felt like we needed the, like, just a little something on the end. So if you guys are ready, it's two minutes past eight. Is that a fair amount of time to wait for people to come? Yeah, and they can catch up, can't they? So I think that that's fine. Um, can you tell I have issues with upsetting people or letting people down? <laughs> I'm reading out a book for free online, but I'm worried that I'm not doing it right. Oh, I've got so much to talk to my therapist about when we're done with all this. Okay, so yeah, we finished the book yesterday, but there is just a little epilogue to to finish on. So, epilogue. God rolled happily back on its chaise long. Author's note. God was not happy. God could not roll and oh do you know what if you haven't grasped it by the epilogue then I'm worried that there's just no helping you God rolled happily back onto its chaise line and stuffed another theoretical grape into its mouth company should be along in three two one and company came bursting in an aggressive strut propelling it across the rug and into the best lighting the heavens could provide with yourself said the devil God removed a pip from its mouth and smiled. Now, do I need to do the French accent even when the devil's back in? Because it didn't have the French accent the first times we were doing it. So, no, I feel like the French accent only exists when it's in human form. I've made an executive decision. We're continuing. Pleased with yourself, said the devil. God removed a pip from its mouth and smiled. I am. Why do you leave the pips in? You're the very definition of all powerful, and yet you just leave these little things all over the place to annoy you. I like removing them, said God simply, wiping another pip onto the arm of the chaise long. Besides, if I didn't keep a few things around that bothered me, then where would you live? I suppose you could always take up permanent residence in the detail. God laughed uproariously at its own weak joke. Save me, the devil groaned furiously. Puns are mine. Keep your hands off. And what are you doing on that ridiculous thing? You look, you are so smug. God stroked the plush cover and smirked. It felt appropriate. You're not supposed to gloat, said the devil, getting churlish. That's my thing. Here, have it back then, said God, and the chaise long became a bed of nails. Pious enough for you? The devil sniffed petulantly. Only if I can sit on your stomach. God smiled benignly, shaking off its moment of revelry. I'm sorry you lost. The devil shrugged, not wishing to dwell on its own failings. It pouted, sulky. I don't really see how you count this as a win. It was God's turn to shrug, but this shrug was a lazy, relaxed shrug. God shrugging really is a beautiful thing. A good shrug is like a good yawn. With a good shrug, tension goes. The body is animal and the movement holds a billion words. So imagine a God shrugging, a being that has seen everything, had a hand in all of it, and encounters something new only to roll it off its shoulders with sympathetic apathy. God's shrug is immense. 
Oh, don't do that, snapped the devil. I hate it when you shrug. The devil did hate it. It set its teeth on edge. Well, I hate that you get a the, and I don't, said God mildly. It that before, said the devil. You made it too complicated. You should have just made it the God, but you wanted the one God, and they couldn't cope. Also, you wanted to be all chummy. You wanted to be their friend. I told you it would make things less clear. I'm not chummy. God tried a pout out too, but it looked very odd. God pouted and somewhere on earth a piece of driftwood appeared with live, love, laugh written on it. You can't be pleased with this outcome, persisted the devil. Essentially, all you've done is lost another member of your dwindling stock of religious people. Not a great day for you. I haven't lost her. She's not going to church anymore, said the devil. No, but I never asked them to, returned God, serving up an easy ball. That was their scheme. It was never necessary. The devil opened its mouth to ask a question, but God held up a palm in a gesture intended to silence and infuriate the devil. So yes, on paper, or whatever it is they're using now, I, I believe they're back to tablets of some sort. Yes, we have lost someone. But in reality, we have another human being who has chosen the condition of love over all else. She has recognized kindness and love to be the pinnacle over everything, even me. As far as I'm concerned, love is truly a win for us. The devil sat silent for just a moment. Ugh, how incredibly unimaginative. God looked at its old friend and a pang of sadness washed through its cosmos of a torso. How awful to have absolutely no concept of how endlessly entertaining it was to love and to have no chance of ever experiencing it. It would be terribly sad to think about the devil for too long. God knew only too well how fleeting were the moments of fulfillment when you fed off creating joy, let alone how empty it must feel to feast on the nothings of the universe. Here, said God, waving a mythological hand, I've got you something. I think you'll really like it. The devil's head snapped up. What is it? It's the comments section. Norton Fitzwarren was bathed in, bathed in autumn sunshine. It eased the first leaves off the branches and they gathered in excitable puddles at the bottom of trunks, just waiting for rain to turn them into mulch. The breeze was blowing again, fresh and alive, no more for this village, the stale, dusty-tasting air of the apocalypse. Norton Fitzwarren felt ready, ready to carry on. It was a big day. Bunting was strung out all around the village hall, and people bustled around, making everything perfect for the day's celebration. Nigel and Beryl were heaving boxes of food from the shop to the waiting trestle tables. Angela Norman had laid out lovely, if mismatched, tablecloths, and Martin Young had made a banner. The village hall was a monument to love. It was in every carefully laid out wooden chair and every hand rolled sausage roll. It was also in every argument that had gone on before the big day to decide what the best food would be. I want, uh, no, hang on, accents. Oh, I can't do accents. Um, oh, come on, Laura, it's your own bloody accent when you're not pretending to be posh. All right, I want hot food, Mr Baxter had demanded. He couldn't put his finger on why, but for some reason he was very appreciative of being able to easily cook things. Mr Baxter felt like that modern invention just shouldn't be taken for granted. You can have hot food, grumped Mrs White, but without her usual terrier attitude. She felt mellower, and it wasn't just because of the crisp white envelope from the local hospital that she had received that morning. As long as there's also crisps, said Martin Young. We've plenty of crisps for sale in the shop, said Beryl quickly. I don't want just ready salted, though, Martin sulked. The vicar guided them back on track with a promise of a coleslaw or two. Sarah and Hamish hadn't joined in the debate. The food was largely irrelevant to them in their bubble of togetherness. They sat at the back of the meeting and let the good-natured argument rage around them while they concentrated on the feelings of each other's fingers interlaced together. After the big showdown in Staplegrove, they had walked back to Norton Fitzwarren in relative quiet, speaking only to check what they wanted for dinner, confirming it was definitely takeaway, and then slowly realising that takeaway was an option again, even though they didn't quite know how they knew this. The clear memories of what had happened began to slip away, like a dream being chased away by a bullying alarm. They were left with the residual feeling of an event, a big event, and the fading feeling that they had dodged a bullet. Jesus was gone from their minds by the time they crossed their welcome mat and finally put the kettle on. As they sat, drinking their tea and waiting for the takeaway to arrive, it occurred to Hamish that he'd never got round to proposing, and he couldn't for the life of him remember why. 
He slipped his hand in his pocket and Sarah had a ring and a chow mein within the same half hour. There wasn't a moment's hesitation in her acceptance of either. The village shook the paws off and began rolling again in its own unique way. Mr Baxter and Rufus could be seen lapping the park. Angela Norman was still growing out her fringe and the ring of bells emitted smoke and hangovers onto the street every Friday and Saturday. They'd all been waiting for today, though. The vicar paced nervously in his living room, wanting everything to go perfectly for his friends and flock. He looked over his notes, hoping he'd summed up his feelings eloquently and warmly. This was a big day, the kind of day you only did once. Everyone was at home getting ready. Martin Young had actually polished his shoes, combed his hair and fantasised about asking Karen to go with him three times. He hadn't asked her. He wasn't too sure on the etiquette and he wasn't too sure on whether he'd be able to get the words out in the right order. Rufus had a new collar and Nigel and Beryl were closing the shop for the whole day, which made the occasion more important than Christmas. Hamish looked at himself in the mirror and flattened his hair for the final time. He was nervous, but he didn't really know why. What was there to be nervous about? He thought about Sarah and the ring on her finger and smiled to himself. In the next room, Sarah smoothed down her dress and adjusted the ring Hamish was thinking about. Time to head out. It was a beautiful day. It would have been remiss of the author to make it any other kind. Nothing but a beautiful autumn day could have sufficed. Hamish walked up the last few steps of the path and greeted the vicar warmly. Hamish, said the vicar, you look wonderful. What a fantastic suit. Thank you, said Hamish, awkward, and I love your cassock, supplied the vicar helpfully, and thank you, it's new. Hamish nodded like he had known that and turned to squint down the path. Is everyone in? He asked. Yes, said the vicar, all were very prompt. Are you feeling okay? Oh, I, said Hamish, I'll feel better once Sarah gets here. Yes, yes, I understand. Well, as soon as she arrives, we'll begin. I'll, uh, I'll be inside. The vicar turned and headed through the big wooden door, leaving Hamish stood awkwardly alone outside. As he waited, he saw the shiny black car pulling up at the bottom of the path and Sarah stepped out. He smiled. Inside, the atmosphere was bubbling, energetic, but held. The vicar took the signal from Arthur Arthur at the back and signalled the congregation to silence. They hushed instantly and took to their feet, turning to look at the door. Hamish stepped in with Sarah by his side, holding her hand and leading the procession of four impeccably suited men delicately shouldering a shiny cherry wooden coffin. They moved slowly and smoothly down the aisle and laid the coffin down in front of the waiting vicar. Sarah and Hamish took a seat in the front pew and the congregation sat down with them. We are here today to celebrate the exceptionally warm and welcoming life of Irish Shoe, began the vicar, and the residents of Norton Fitzwarren adjusted to their new reality. Not a single life had been lost through the entire apocalypse, but two days after normality had been restored, Irish Shoe had had a particularly compelling dream about Colin and chosen to stay in it permanently. Sarah sat in her pew and listened to the vicar be absolutely charming and comforting about the life of her friend and neighbour, she stood up to sing, and at one point to stand at the front and read a passage from Mrs. Shoe's own Bible. All the time Sarah sat and sang and read, she fingered the little object in her pocket, running her fingers over the soft little buttons and enjoying the smooth plastic of the Tamagotchi. The vicar had brought it round the day Mrs. Shoe had died. Apparently she'd left a note on her key table suggesting that Sarah might like a little memento. Perceptive old bat, Sarah had thought, smiling through bittersweet tears. The service ended and they solemnly trooped to the gravesite to see Iris finally lie down by Colin. Then the human contents of Norton Fitzwarren all made their way to the village hall to say goodbye in style, with line dancing and a meat bingo. There you go. That's the, the full end. That is, that's all she wrote of this draft. <laughs> that's the end of... Uh, as we know it. I just felt like it needed um, a little return to the village post showdown and a little bit of a checkup to see what God and the devil were up to. Um, so I hope you liked it. Um, if you did like it and you have a stable income, I have a coffee account um, which is in my Twitter profile and I'll put it in the in the um, description of this video. So if you've listened to the story and you feel like doing that, but please don't do it if you're at all worried about money. It, honestly, um, that's uh it's, it's not necessary um 
Oh, good. I'm glad you've liked it. Yay, there was a bit of a silence in the comments section. And by the way, when I was slagging off comment sections, I very much mean like online newspaper comment sections, not you guys chatting in the live chat. Um, good. I'm glad. Oh, good. I like, I'm glad you liked the meet bingo ending. Good. Good, good, good. I'm glad you liked it. Thank you very much all for, for watching. So, um, I mean, I, I'm not sure what the best thing to do now is. It's been lovely having a communal thing. So I think if you want to, I'm more than happy to keep doing it if it's of use and interest and nice to give your day some structure and something for New Zealand to wake up to. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to write a sequential story day to day. I think that that's just a little bit too much pressure. But what I think we could do is maybe short stories. So if you're interested in that, let's maybe do short stories starting from Monday. Um, so uh, if that's okay with you, we'll take a break for a couple of days and then starting from Monday, we'll do short stories every night, if that's okay. And then I just get a couple of days to start writing and then we can we can still meet up at eight o'clock every day. So yeah, we'll have a day off t from tomorrow until Monday. And then, um, yeah, but I'll, I'll tweet about it because I think then that way there's a lot of people that are catching up with this. Um, so yeah. Uh, Please enjoy your days off, but how about one of your shows? Well, my shows are all available. So the two shows that I've recorded as as um, hour-long specials, they're both on a website called Next Up. So nextup.com. And if you use the code I Love Laura, you'll get um, a, a free trial. So it is one of those trials where you need to end it before it rolls. But obviously, you keep on top of the, the small print. But you can basically watch both my shows in the free trial. They're only an hour. Um, <laughs> So you can do that. And I'll be on Twitter and Instagram. So I'll be around. I'll probably end up tweeting at eight o'clock every night going, I don't know what to do with myself. But it just gives me four days to start writing. And then I'll be a little bit ahead of myself so that I'm, I'm not trying to produce a short story every day on top of everything else. Um, so yay, this was really lovely. I'm glad you liked the epilogue. I feel like that was the right end. Um, have a really lovely evening. And thank you very much. This has been lovely. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.